回大哥，咱们来大哥。The highway Zhang Li Pu and his brother will be taking is called the Kunming Bangkok Highway. Stretching more than 1,800 kilometers from Kunming, China to Bangkok, Thailand, today it is one of the most important routes in the Greater Mekong subregion. This modern highway begins in central Yunnan and then extends south to cut through the northwest of Laos before entering northern and central Thailand. It is, in fact, the first expressway built that runs right through the Greater Mekong subregion. This is China's Xiaomengyang surveillance center on the Kunming Bangkok Highway. With these facilities, every event that takes place on this highway, the first to run through tropical rainforests within China's boundaries, can be observed. A 37-kilometer long section of the highway runs along the edge of the Shishuang Banna Natural Reserve, the site of the best preserved rainforest along the Tropic of Cancer. Achieving a balance between development and preservation is an important challenge faced by all the nations along the Lantang Mekong River Basin, and naturally, it is a challenge they are doing their utmost to meet. This portion of the highway is a fine example of what can be achieved in the coordination of transportation development and the preservation of nature. We first focused on environment, then work. It's not like the past year, it's first to build, then to build. So we can very well do this environment work. We have to do this building, and to build the building, and to build the building. 呃，还有气土产的这个整个的绿化呢，我们选用的是一年生的这个就是呃瘦身植物，然后呃自然的呢，它会被这个本土的植物呢所取所取代，啊，避免了这个外来物种的侵害。This portion of the highway also runs through China's wild elephant valley, an important habitat for the Asian elephant. Along the road, dozens of signs in both English and Chinese warn. Passageway for wild elephants, no honking. Drivers are expected not to disturb any giants of the jungle that may happen to pass underneath the highway. To preserve a passageway for migrating elephants, Chinese highway construction workers built special elephant tunnels and bridges so the elephants would not have to contend with highway traffic. The section of the Kunming Bangkok Highway in China has been completed, and the rest of the highway will be ready in the very near future. The last part of the Thailand section of the Kunming Bangkok Highway to be built is a bridge that will connect Hoai She in Laos with Chiang Kong in Thailand. <laughs> At present, goods from China transported by ship along the Mekong River have to be unloaded in Chiang Saen, then distributed to other places by trucks along the Kunming Bangkok Highway in Thailand. This is the case with this truckload of apples, which will appear in markets in Bangkok tomorrow. However, once the highway is complete, it will take just 20 hours to travel from Kunming to Bangkok. เราใช้ถนนเพื่ออะไรถ้าถนนเพื่อขนส่งสินค้านะครับเราก็จะได้เป็นแหล่งที่ขนส่งสินค้าส่งผ่านประเทศไทยไปยังประเทศโลกที่3นะครับได้การบริการได้ดังเรื่องของการที่จะาการให้บริการต่างๆที่จะขนส่งสินค้าจากยีนผ่านลาวหรือจากลาวผ่านมาไทยนะครับเราส่งต่อไปยังท่าเรือเพื่อออกสู่ประเทศโลกที่3นะครับประเทศที่3ว่าอันนั้นเป็นเรื่องของการขนส่งที่จะได้ประโยชน์จากการขนส่ง
แต่ว่าถ้าถามบอกว่าในเรื่องของการเชื่อมระบบคมนาคมขนส่งระหว่างกลุ่มอนุภูมิภาคนะครับก็จะเป็นเรื่องที่เกิดความสะดวกเพิ่มขึ้นนะครับ The Kunming Bangkok Highway has laid a solid foundation for the construction of a land transportation network that will eventually cover the entire Greater Mekong subregion. Presently, construction of a highway from Nanning, China, to Hanoi, Vietnam, is underway. The demand for ease of contact and efficient exchange of commodities is much stronger in the 21st century than in the past. And cooperation among the nations in the Lantang Mekong River Basin has intensified. To make it easy for commodities and personnel to flow among nations of the subregion, increase economic efficiency, improve the lives of the people, and advance trade and tourism in the nation's economies, Cambodia, China, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam signed the agreement for the facilitation of cross-border transport of goods and people in the Greater Mekong subregion. The agreement marks the completion of a legal framework for this important endeavor. Today in November 2007, after entering China through Longzhou Port and Pingxiang Friendship Pass, a hundred motor vehicles from Vietnam could be seen grouped together at the former pass. With this agreement coming into force between China and Vietnam, a key step forward has been made towards achieving the objective of no obstacle transportation in the China ASEAN Free Trade Zone. After the ceremony, the Vietnamese drivers received temporary licenses from the relevant Chinese department that enabled them to travel at will anywhere inside the prescribed area. With the initiation of this joint control of vehicle entry arrangement, goods from one country no longer need to switch vehicles to enter the other. This arrangement greatly facilitates port entry procedures, reduces shipping costs, and simplifies customs inspections and vehicle control procedures. Clearly, it is also of great importance in assisting the development of the highway network in the countries of the sub-region and in boosting friendship, trade, and economic cooperation between them. Cooperation in matters pertaining to railway transportation is also progressing rapidly. In November 2006, 18 Asian countries, China included, signed the Intergovernmental Agreement on the Trans-Asian Railway Network. The Trans-Asian Railway Network is a unified system for cargo transportation between the Asian and European continents. After the railways in the 18 countries are connected, land transportation capacity will be increased considerably. In the 19th century, the French designed and built the Vietnam Yunnan International Railway as a means of establishing a passageway from Indochina to China's interior. This railway, the first attempt to open a major transportation route in the area, runs along the edges of the subregion from Kunming, China to Haiphong, Vietnam, and it is 854 kilometers long. However, the construction of this railway cost the lives of many Chinese laborers. Trains have hauled carriages along this railway for almost a hundred years since it was completed in 1910. These days, the line is no longer used for passenger transportation, but cargo is transported more than ever along the line, 
with an increase in quantity of, on average, 10,000 tons a year. Every year through this railway, China exports more than 200 varieties of goods to Vietnam and imports from the country more than 100 types of goods. As this railway is currently the only international railway connecting China and Southeast Asia, it is a highly strategic one. Trains here run on what is called a narrow gauge, as just a meter separates the rails. Many countries in the Lantang Mekong River Basin use this narrow gauge system, as it makes crossing the many rivers and mountain ranges more feasible. The narrow gauge railway is ideal for the topography of the subregion, as it requires less work to build. Even today, in this era of high speed trains, narrow gauge railways still play a vital role. Among all the nations in the subregion, Myanmar has the longest history of using narrow gauge railways. Railways in Myanmar have extended outwards from the first one built in 1877 to cover the entire country, and they create a vital lifeline for the nation. Myanmar's railway system is really like a railway museum. Early in the morning, sunshine penetrates the thin fog to greet travelers. In Myanmar, railway lines extend to every township, and so trains have become the ideal means for travelers to commute to work, visit friends and relatives, or do business. For these passengers, entering the station and boarding the train is a familiar and easy procedure. This line provides a short distance service so that its passengers, many of whom are engaged in small businesses elsewhere, can get on and off along the line at will. The carriages are designed to be functional, allowing plenty of space for carry-on luggage. And importantly, no one stands at the entrance blocking the way to check tickets. People are free to walk in and walk out. All the ticket checking is done on board the train only after the journey begins. To people in Myanmar, short distance services such as this work in much the same way as bus services elsewhere. History shows that any place with access to convenient transportation facilities sees rapid economic development, and the year market is no exception. Because of the convenient railway transportation, many people from further down the line come here to do business. When one boards the train, one can see the peaceful life of the people of Myanmar. The city of Mandalay by the Ayawadi River in the central part of Myanmar is the country's second largest city. As it lies at the center of the railway network, 
Mandalay is an important hub in the country's land transport.